Good morning, everybody. It is eight minutes past nine and you are listening to The Jess Address at IPL Studio. I'm sorry, you know me, I'm always running a little bit late, but those things you have to wait for are always good. And I am sitting in the chair. Joining me is the lovely Emma. Good morning, Jess. How are you? I am feeling a little bit rushed this morning, <laughs> but thankfully, <laughs> I've well, got a coffee. Yeah, and I kind of think the... the the weather is not on our side anymore. <laughs> Who knows like, what's happening with the weather? Yeah, no, two weeks ago we were just so excited because it was starting to get hot again and now, like, today is just not okay. I'm there, not happy. There's a little bit of a pattern behaviour between you and me. As soon as we get in, we talk about the weather. I know. Is that old age? Well, I kind of, I don't think it's old age. I think it's like... Old age. Concerned. <laughs> it's definitely old age. We're actually going to start this morning with a great interview. We've actually got Kristen here from Helen O'Grady's who runs Rockingham and Mandra. Mandra. Now, if you don't know what Helen O'Grady's is, Kristen is about to let us know. Oh, hi. Um, so Helen O'Grady Drama Academy was established by Helen O'Grady herself uh, in 1979. It was very much a Perth-based, um, drama-based company that is now all over the world. And uh, one of the amazing things about Emma is she used to be the principal. I did. I used to work for her. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the principal and she will come back and work for me at some point. Absolutely, <laughs> she Being will. Being a principal, does that mean like... A principal of a school? Yeah. Is it a school-based class? Well, it's education-based, so that's why we call... Uh, so everyone who runs a franchise is called a principal and everyone who works for us is a teacher. Okay. So, yeah, so we, we educate. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, so when we talk about education, drama is something that we're kind of losing in schools, which is such a shame. So yeah. for you to be able to offer this service in our area is, like, such a benefit and so positive. What types of things do you teach kids? Well... The biggest thing we um, give to kids is confidence, self-esteem and the skill of verbal communication, which I think is another thing that we're losing, especially after the pandemic. Like um, our communication styles have been so online and everyone's been quite... Technology. Technology, mm -hmm. which is not... A, I don't think technology is a bad thing at all and we have um, room for these styles of communication, but we are losing a lot of that face-to-face. -face mm. Back and forth. Back and forth, yeah, just in front of other people. Um, I remember a while ago Emma told me it was like the number one... Group, people were more afraid of speaking in front of an audience than they were of um, being Dumb. eaten by a shark. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes. <laughs> people like, were more... <laughs> I'm definitely more afraid of being eaten by a shark and I'll remember that next time we're doing our fundraiser and I have to speak. Um, but yeah, well, that's an interesting kind of analogy, isn't it? That people are more afraid of being eaten by a shark than speaking. Um, what kind of things do you do to encourage communication? Yep, so we... I think what sets us apart from a lot of other drama classes is that we teach speech as a skill. So we teach kids how to speak and we do it in a fun way because mm. kids won't do anything if they're not having fun. That's true. So we teach formative skills. Some things like just opening your mouth all the way or um, just engaging different sounds and um, getting your voice across a room. So all those things, you know, they're having fun, they're learning skills. They have no idea they're learning skills. They're just having a great time um, pulling faces and saying funny sentences. Yeah, and that actually sets you up for a range of different career choices really we're sitting in here using our voices yeah, to speak I think also it sets you up for life that mm. that understanding that you need to be articulate you need to be understood you need to be heard and I think that being a teacher myself when you you can see kids in the classroom who haven't had any kind of someone who has said okay you need to say your p's you need to say your t's mm. you need to actually articulate that word and hear every sound in the word and it helps not just with their confidence and their ability to speak in front of people but it flows onto their reading and and their grammar and their spelling as well because they know the sounds they hear the sounds and it just has an effect everywhere and then that rolls on to confidence as you were mm. saying when you can articulate your words and you can get your point across you do it more confidently can you tell us a little bit about maybe a little story about a kid that you've seen I you've was got one thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> i saw excitement my, in your eyes then <laughs> love that my favorite story that will st i think will, i think this happened um, about nine years ago. It, like, it stays with me for life. There was this little six-year-old girl and um, she just joined drama and everything. She was having a great time and uh, she wasn't sort of set apart from any other kids. She was having a great time in drama. One day, I think she was her fourth lesson, her mum rang up, ran up and nearly hugged me and I was like, hi, how are you? <laughs> and she had been at loggerheads with her kids' teachers. The teachers were insisting that this little girl couldn't read and the mum saying, no, she can. I see her read all the time. And they're saying, no, we can't. She's not reading. And it turned out she wasn't reading out loud, which is the only way teachers can assess a child's reading is if they hear the words out yes. loud. So after four lessons, 
she'd found her voice. Yeah. Mm. She d- developed that skill, that confidence to, here's my words, here's how they sound out loud. And, um, yeah, her reading uh, levels just jumped and her mum was so happy and it was just, like, such a heartwarming moment. Yeah. That, yeah. And actually had been confident enough to display the skills that she just, already yes. had. And that's yeah. something that I think is really hard, even for me as an adult, um, you know, having that confidence to show people who I am. Yes. So it's really beautiful to see that you can give that gift to people. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell a story too. Okay. Share. Okay. So I remember, and um, it's actually a girl who's currently in year 12 at my daughter's school, and she started my drama classes, and she was so quiet. Mm. Like, really was, did not say boo, and genuinely just it's it's the kind of kid that you need to go hey and bring them out of themselves really really slowly and then by the end of term one her mum came up to me and said do you know what you've done for me I got married on the weekend and my daughter had prepared a speech got a microphone without even letting me know that she was doing it and gave a speech at my wedding she was like eight or nine at the time and I could not get her to say hello Mm. at the beginning of term so just that it was you're getting teary oh my gosh it was so beautiful (laughs) like really I just was not I was just so proud of her to think wow she's found herself she's found her voice she's found her confidence and you should see what this girl is doing now she's just this most beautiful person who shares her creativity with everyone it's just a divine experience so that leads me to a question what age do you recommend that they start like these skills or it's like a drama class isn't it yeah so it's after school classes um, and so we have different age groups that we have um, run our sessions in and at the moment the youngest is five Um, uh, so we have lower primary sessions from five to eight then we have upper primary from nine to twelve and then we have the teenagers which sort of 13 to 17 Um, yeah and and they can join in at any level any, yeah, no, oh yes, any level, absolutely. Um, this time of year we're doing our shows, so uh, yeah, there's too much Showing this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, showing so all the skills you've learned. Yeah, so we go up on the stage and it's a great ch- chance for um, the parents to see how much their children have blossomed. But yeah, it's from terms one to three, just join any part of the term, join at any stage. Because uh, I think there, um, some parents are reluctant, oh, my child's too shy to do mm. this. And I said, that's fine. Yeah, and they, will, the they will have fun. No well, actually, yeah. they're the perfect kids to actually yes, join your yeah. class, aren't absolutely. they? Absolutely. But it's really, I do think it's one of the most all-encompassing sort of education programs I've come across because if your child is very over-the-top and outlandish, you know, they will still have an amazing time. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're pointing over to the chair right now and there's a, a young lady there who's looking going, yep, yep, I am. <laughs> that is right. Very and very beautiful, uh, confident yes, young lady. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what we want to grow and yeah. young men who are confident as well. Absolutely, yeah. I've got a lot of boys in my Saturday class. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's seems to be the class dynamic. for them, yeah. 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 One of the other skills which I'm like really passionate about that I guess that you're teaching as well is creativity. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, the ability to whatever's going in your mind to actually express, obviously in words but actions as yeah. well, using your whole body to kind of let let everyone know your emotion or what you're trying to portray, I think is very, very um, important not to hold things in. Yeah, that's a big – that's so – one of the other things we teach is movement as, as a skill as well and I just uh, – I can make my phone going off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's where we will describe a scenario and the kids will just act it out with their bodies. And so, yeah, I don't know if we so much teach creativity. I think a lot of kids are just naturally creative. but we harness we, it. We harness it, we facilitate it because mm-hmm. th- there's not a lot of places where they can be that. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. I, I think also one thing that you see in every class is the, like it, the, I guess it's a social skill of um, not just conversation but... Uh, what's that word begins with a C compromise so everyone has ideas and the way in which the kids come together Mm. share their ideas and understand you know what we can make this idea work we can bring three ideas Mm. together so that conversation that needs to happen working together a bit of teamwork as well absolutely definitely life skills along the way yeah eh? and that to and fro of conversation is very important learning when to listen and when to speak yeah and I think that like Kristen said earlier this idea that we are communicating now so much through technology I think that kids sort of expect that when they're communicating with someone that that person is actually going is there to entertain them so they don't have that understanding of 
conversation and how a conversation should flow. It's more like, so what are you going to do to make me laugh? Or what are you going to do to make <laughs> me smile? And so that skill, that's that the art of conversation that's slowly being lost is really being reinforced in the classes that you give. Yeah. So I'm a parent listening right now and I'm thinking, yes, my child needs to be involved in this. How do they get in contact with you? Where do they go to classes? Yeah, um, so I'll give you our list of classes. So Monday, so we've got Greenfield, Secret Harbour, Hall's Head, Warmbra, Baldivis and Corngup. Yes. You are one busy lady. <laughs> yes, I have Sundays off, so that's nice. <laughs> and um, so we've got our website, so helenogrady.net.au. So you can we can enrol online now. We've caught up with the times mm-hmm. and we have online, online enrolments, which um, has a lot less paperwork, um, you know, um, and it just makes the process so much faster. So if you, we have two options. You can go fill in an enrolment form straight away, or you can do an inquiry where you can um, you can send me your number and, and we can have a conversation. You can ask me questions about you know times or just we'll go further into what they'll be learning, and uh, I can help you out with that process. Yeah, that's great. So you've also got a Facebook page. Yep. Yeah, so we've got a Facebook page, and um, which is controlled by our lovely Helen Davey who's the uh, executive principal and um, so you can contact her you can't um, I've got a I do have a Facebook page where you can send me a message um, and we have a Facebook group as well. Now I wanted to personally thank you very much for your donation for our fundraiser that's coming up the pink the stronger together pink hearts fundraiser for breast cancer you've actually given us a term worth of classes which is absolutely extraordinary and so generous so thanks so much for being part of our community so i'm going to put your details up on my facebook page so that people know where to get in touch with you great great service that you're offering offering kids there's a fly that's hanging around it's it's a moth (laughs) swear to god it's been hanging around me all week guys (laughs) i must have opened my wallet Listen, um, Helen O'Grady's, you can talk to Christian. Um, all you need to do is contact her on her Facebook page or visit the website. We're going to listen to a little bit of music now. Powderfinger, My Happiness.